For the longest time, the only thing we knew about Gilneas was the impenetrable wall that blocked them off from the rest of the outside world. But during the Cataclysm, their defenses crumbled, and it was clear that within the secluded kingdom, it was not always sunshine and rainbows. Gilneas' downfall was not a sudden collapse like some might think. The root of the kingdom's problem was a slow deterioration because of their king and his more than questionable decisions. Our story begins with the human kingdoms prospering greatly. The Empire of Arathor had evolved into multiple city-states that flourished into their own separate kingdoms who dominate a good chunk of the continent. In its prime, the land owned by Gulneus was much larger than we know today. They held control over parts of Silver Pine Forest, Hillsbrad Foothills, and even an island called Zoldair, a mysterious place we still haven't seen to this day in-game. But I'm getting off track. Point is, everybody's doing great until there was seven-foot-tall roided-up orcs from another world that poured out of the Dark Portal. This overwhelming alien threat rampaged up north and left Stormwind City in rubble. If this threat wasn't managed, these otherworldly savages would be on the other kingdom's doorstep next. With great haste, King Terranus Menethil met with Anduin Lothar and then organized a meeting with all of the other human kingdoms so they could band together. King Terranus pleaded for the aid of the other kingdoms and a good majority of them helped without question. This included the kingdoms like Kul Taras, Stromgar, Dalaran, Alterac, and Gilneas. Sort of. Gen Greymane heeded the advice of his two advisors. One was Lord Darius Crowley, and the other was Lord Vincent Godfrey. There was also this guy named Baron Ashbury, but he literally did nothing, so I'm just not going to include him. Darius was enthusiastic about the Gilnean military lending aid to their sister nations. It would give them a tight bond with the other kingdoms, and they would grow together. But Lord Vincent Godfrey, he had other plans. <laughs> He felt like Darius was a bit too optimistic and instead suggested that they only send a very small token force of soldiers to help. Now despite Gen's boasting of how he had the strongest military in all of the Eastern Kingdoms, he wasn't too thrilled about dealing with other people's problems so he took the advice from Godfrey and only sent a small fraction of support to help the Alliance of Lodoran. Oh come on Gen, maybe you can just help out a little bit mo- No. Lord Greymane, please, maybe a- Nope. How about you- mm. Mm. Bruh. Despite Gen's unwillingness to cooperate, the humans win the second war and push the orcs back into the dark portal. But Gen still was not happy. During the war, one of the kings that was a part of the alliance betrayed them confirming Gen's distaste for helping others. Also, Gilnean taxpayers had to fork up the gold to pay for orc internment camps and the construction of Nethergard Keep. Lord Greymane started to question why he even joined the Alliance in the first place. The only thing that had happened since he joined was he lost a bunch of gold and ended up with a bunch of dead Gilneans. So Lord Greymane pulled out of the Alliance and focused on securing his kingdom's isolation. Deep within Lord Greymane's manor, he had an epiphany. What better way to isolate his kingdom than building a giant wall? Now, one would think the reasonable thing to do would be to build a wall around all of the land owned by Gilneas. Now, the thing is, building a wall that big would take a ridiculous amount of gold and resources. Impossible! It was Lord Godfrey's suggestion that the wall be built into the mountainside instead. This would make the wall cheaper and more practical since it used the natural land to their advantage. 
The problem is that they would be blocking off a good chunk of their citizens from the rest of their kingdom, effectively abandoning them in the process. But these lands that they would be cutting off were owned by Darius Crowley, that alliance sympathizer. But, you know, that's okay. Gen was confident that Crowley would understand his reasoning. Crowley did not understand his reasoning. In fact, he was pretty pissed, and so were the people of Priorwood Village, the town that was blocked off from the rest of Gilnaean society. Oi! Stop throwing rocks at Oi! Piss off! Despite the resistance, the wall was eventually constructed. Tensions between Crowley and Gen were incredibly high, but they were able to maintain their differences. But this barely maintained peace would not last for long. While Gilneas was on the cusp of a civil war, the Scourge was busy invading the lands of Lordaeron to the north. As the kingdom crumbled to the might of the Plague of Undeath, they begged Gilneas for aid. And the people, who once called themselves proud Gilneans, pounded on the wall, hoping that the king they trusted would give them salvation. But the only response they received was silence. Shoot to kill! Bloody hell. If I knew the Scourge would invade, I would have planned accordingly. Whatever tricks you have up your sleeve, they better work. Tricks? Oh no no no, my creatures are not mere tricks. I prefer the term, very good boys. I don't know what you mean, they're just dogs, surely they can't- Oh, <laughs> oh Gen. I must warn you, these creatures have an unsatiable bloodlust. Once they are released, there is no turning back. To be frank with you, Archmage, I have no choice. You are my last bastion of hope, Harugal, and I will see it done. Whatever you wish, my lord. At the king's discretion, Archmage Arukal unleashed the power of the worgen on the Scourge. Summoning them from an unknown realm he did not truly understand. Go! Attack my pet! Yes, who's a good boy? <laughs> Slash them to bits! Arugal knew the worgen were ferocious, but he underestimated how bloodthirsty they really were. And once all the Scourge were defeated, the worgen's ferocity was aimed towards the remaining citizens of Priorwood Village. Bad dog, no! Stop this instant! Arugal was driven mad with grief as the worgens killed or infected the remaining survivors with the curse. And he just gave up and spent the rest of his days crying in Shadowfang Keep with his worgen that he now called his children. Oh, I am so, so sad. <sighs> oh, thank you, my son. As chaos reigned beyond the wall, tensions exploded within Gilneas when citizens found out about the innocents that were caught in the crossfire. And in an act of defiance, Darius sent a small group of Gilnean soldiers to help with the alliance in the Third War without the approval of King Greymane. Greymane was livid at Darius's careless decision and considered it an act of treason. This outrage sparked an uprising within the city. An organization called the Northgate Rebels started to form, and Darius Crowley was their leader. They revolted against their king and his tyranny. 
This was the breaking point that spiraled Gilneas into a full-blown civil war. One side was the rebels that was led by Darius, and the other was the loyalists that sided with their king. Blood was shed on the streets of the city, and the climax of the conflict was when Darius and his rebels smuggled in heavy artillery to Gilneas with plans of leveling the city if it came to it. Unfortunately, the remaining rebels, including Darius, were captured before they could even use their firepower and were thrown in the stone ward prison. Command you to unhand me this infant. <laughs> Damn it, Gen. Do you not understand? This is your doing. You cannot pretend like the outside world doesn't exist. You've killed your own people in this pointless escapade for independence, and it will only get worse. I do what I must to keep Gilneas safe. You cannot say the same, Crowley. This is ridiculous! The Gilnean people's blood is on your hands, Gen. Gen? Are you listening? La 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 la, I cannot hear you. You may. For a small amount of time, Gilneas had much needed peace, but the curse that doomed the lands beyond the wall had found itself within. Oh, you know what? You guys are great. No, you're great. Oh, cheers, lads. <laughs> oh, why hello there, you little pup. Come on, don't be shy. Come here. Come on. Let me give you a good old hug. Once again, tensions began to rise within Gilneas, but for much more horrifying reasons. Murders labeled as the Starlight Slasher Killings left Gilnean people in horror. And at first, people assumed these murders were committed by the Northgate Rebellion, but there too was whispers that the murders were performed by a mysterious cult that willingly submitted themselves to the Worgen Curse. Oh, shut up! Gen refused to admit that the worgen had reached the wall. It would only lead to utter chaos within the city. He wanted to hide the truth from his people. But there was no denying the curse had infected the city. Gen made the grave mistake of letting in injured Gilnean guards that fought the worgen outside of the wall, and now this bizarre rumor of a cult was emerging. Things were getting out of hand, and if Gen wanted to fix the problems he got himself into, he'd have to handle it himself. It was a common occurrence, Greymane and his closest noble allies would organize hunting parties on every full moon, culling the worgen population for sport and for vengeance. Greymane, have a gander at this beast! I reckon you should join us in a group photo! No, this one's mine. Suit yourself. Come on, you beast. I helped bring you into this world, and I will take you out of it. Are you into furries? What? Greymane, are you alright? I need to patch myself up before they find me. Ugh. 
Much better. Ah, oh, there you are, my lord. Did he touch ya? Uh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Just bastard almost got me. But he didn't lay a scratch on me, that's for sure. Bloy me, I'm glad you're safe, my lord. Would have to shoot you on sight if that bloody beast got a bite on you. Yeah, right. Now infected with the curse, Greymane frequently hides away in his observatory, rather than going on what he now deemed as pointless and dangerous hunts. Things were looking grim for Greymane until a surprising new ally appeared on the horizon. Night elves from a far distant land traveled to Gilneas to help them with the worgen. The ancient curse was ultimately their doing thousands and thousands of years ago, so they deemed themselves responsible for this plight. One night elf in particular was named Belisra, and she helped fight back Greymane's affliction in secret. Not even the nobles, Gen's children, or his own wife knew about this partnership with Belisra. And I know what you're thinking, no. It was a strictly business relationship. She just shot the power of the moon at him. And that's not an innuendo, she literally did that. I cannot thank you elves enough. Perhaps with your aid, Gilneas can be brought to salvation and my people can be free once more. Whatever it takes, Lord Greymane, the Calderai- My lord! My lord, the city of Gilneas is under siege by the beasts! <gasps> I'm talking bloody hundreds of them! I can't believe my eyes! You must come quick! <laughs> no! My city! I need my people evacuated this instant! Hey, uh, so I'm kind of having second thoughts about this whole helping humans thing. 